Hey guys, Rod Flamingo here, back with more of the Guild Wars 2 personal story. So obviously I've already played through the whole main personal story from start to finish. Uh, so now what I want to do is I want to give you a quick recap of Living World Season 1. Um, the reason why it's a recap is because Living World Season 1 actually isn't playable anymore. Uh, so as you can see, if I go here and click to begin the story of Scarlet's War, you get a history lesson. So you need to read the mail titled History Lesson. And this says, Beastly Flamingo, we have a saying at the Derman Priory, remember the past so you may shape the future. With that in mind, I've been con conducting interviews and collecting historical information on Scarlet Briar and her war against Tyria starting in 1326 AE. I've prepared a summary of my research for you it covers the major events of her campaign leading up to the final attack on Lion's Arch in 1327. Meet me in Lion's Arch when you can, I'll be waiting. And then there's a message from Arena Net here, just saying Living World Season 1 was a series of live content events that ran from January 2013 to March 2014. It chronicled Scarlet Briar's war on Tyria, culminating in the destruction of Old Lion's Arch and the awakening of a powerful entity. The story was designed to be experienced as it happened. And it's currently unavailable for episodic replay. So as you can see, um, we actually have to go here to Lion's Arch. You should all know where that is. And then just over here on, on the west side, you can go to the Western Ward Waypoint and run through to here. And then this is where your objective is. So basically, you just got to go speak to this woman and she can give you a history lesson. So let's have a little look and watch the cinematic. Scarlet Briar. Where should I begin? No one at first knew why she began her reign of terror. Some say she peered into the very fabric of the universe and went insane. Her attacks began in the northeast and spread like fire. She formed uneasy alliances and controlled her minions through deception and brutality. She leveraged their technology to scan for currents of magical energy called ley lines. Each attack had a purpose, allowing her to collect data from across Tyria that would later be used to assault Lion's Arch. When all hope seemed lost, the heroes of Tyria rose to the task, along with new allies. Bram Arison of Cragstead. Rox Whetstone, Gladium. Casimir Mead, Mesmer. Marjorie Delacroix, Investigator. And Taimi, Prodigy from Radasum. Led by the Pact Commander, they dismantled Scarlet's operation. But while they reclaimed the city at the Battle of Lion's Arch, they would later discover that she had completed her mission, even in death. Scarlet's machine struck the ley line deep beneath Sanctum Harbor, directing its magic far into the Maguma jungle, changing the course of history. As you can see, a lot of stuff happened in Living World Season 1, and a lot of new characters were introduced. So I'm just going to speak to this lady now and just get a little bit more information for you guys about the characters, starting with Marjorie Delacroix. Marjorie Delacroix is a necromancer from Divinity's Reach. Until recently, she was a member of the Ministry Guard of Divinity's Reach and was responsible for protecting various Crichton ministers and their staff. She quit that job after witnessing some terrible abuses of power. After she left the Guard, she went into business as an investigator for hire taking on various cases that her clients needed handled, often with discretion. When Scarlet's Aetherblades assassinated Theo Ashford of the Captain's Council, Marjorie led the inquiry that led to the arrest of their leader, Captain Mai Trin. Trin later escaped her cell and fled to the Mists, shortly before Scarlet's attack on Lion's Arch. Miss Delacroix would later help destroy the Tower of Nightmares in Kessex Hills, along with Lady Casimir Mead and the Pact Commander, who led the mission. Through her connections as a Derman Priory member, she obtained evidence samples left behind by Scarlet's forces. The Pact Commander, with Marjorie's help and that of Casimir and Vorp, predicted the attack on Lion's Arch. Despite their warnings to the Captain's Council, the city fell, but it was later reclaimed. 
Okay, so that's Marjorie. It's a pleasure to see you. So now let's ask about Casimir Mead. Lady Casimir Mead comes from noble stock, but her family has since fallen on hard times. Her gambling brother Kyle put the family deep into debt, forcing her father to liquidate their possessions. Despite his efforts to fix Kyle's mistakes and unable to pay his own bills, her father was thrown into prison, where he died. Casimir, now forced to work, found employment as an investigator with Marjorie Delacroix. Their combined efforts, with the Pact Commander's help, led to the solving of Theo Ashford's murder during Dragon Bash. Casimir was instrumental in uncloaking the Nightmare Tower, as well as in other battles during Scarlet's campaign. She distracted Scarlet in the final battle on the Breachmaker, giving the Pact Commander a chance to deal the death blow. So even Tyria has degenerate gamblers, apparently. Let's ask about Rox. Rox is a gladium. She lost her entire warband in a mining explosion. Since then, she performed tasks for Ritlock Brimstone, the Blood Legion Tribune, in an effort to join his Stone Warband. She crossed paths with Bram at the Molten Alliance facility. Together, under the leadership of the Pact Commander, they infiltrated the weapons base, freed the prisoners, and destroyed that operation. Throughout Scarlet's campaign, Rox fought beside the Pact Commander, providing ranged support and healing the injured. She accompanied the strike team that led the assault on Scarlet's Breachmaker in Lion's Arch. When Bram broke his leg during the fight, Rox stayed behind to tend to him. She also revived Marjorie Delacroix, who was wounded by Scarlet's blast. Intending to her friends, she forfeited her opportunity to kill Scarlet, leaving the Pact Commander to do the honors. This was in direct conflict to her orders, and it ultimately led to her not gaining membership in the Stone Warband. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. Rox plays quite a big character, and so now let's ask about Bram. Bram Arison hails from Cragstead, a sizable homestead in Wayfarer foothills. He's the son of Arista Galkin and Borgia the Sun Chaser. As a child, he never knew his mother. She and Borgia parted amicably so she could forge her legend with Destiny's Edge. Bram's father, a hero in his own right, agreed to raise Bram to adulthood. Unfortunately, that wasn't meant to be. Borgia died when his son was a young boy. In the care of friends, Bram grew into an impetuous teen. He has a reputation for being a bit impulsive, but his heart's in the right place, or so I'm told. When the Molten Alliance swept through Nornlands, Bram saw the violence firsthand. He sought help from the Char at the Black Citadel, but was turned away. Tribune Brimstone had no troops to spare, and he didn't believe the claims that Bram was the son of his guildmate. Undeterred, Bram approached Newt Whitebear in the hopes of gathering Norn to fight back the invaders. Again, he was denied. As the sons of Svanir were perceived as the bigger threat to Holbrek, Bram ultimately teamed up with Rox Whetstone, a Char Gladian who had fought the Molten Alliance at Nolan Hatchery. Together, and with the aid of the Pact Commander, they infiltrated the Molten Alliance weapons facility and destroyed it from the inside. Bram was involved in a number of operations against Scarlet. He joined the Pact Commander in the final assault on the Breachmaker, but he broke his leg in the process. All right, so that's Bran, the son of Aester Golkin. Let's ask about Timey. Ah, Timey. Rarely have I seen so much intellect and attitude crammed into such a tiny body. But don't let her size fool you. Between her feisty attitude and her skill at Gollomancy, let's just say you wouldn't want to get on her bad side. She comes from Radasun, though her studies have taken her abroad. She first came to my attention when Scarlet's marionette was stomping around. Her obsession with Scarlet's research led to some crucial discoveries. When she speaks about magic, especially that of Elder Dragons, you'd best listen. All of this stuff's pretty relevant, to be fair, because a lot of these uh, characters become really important later on. I think that's all the information she has, so that will probably do. Yeah, so a lot of this is really important, so I think it's good to have this recap. Um, we're going to be moving on to Living World Season 2 now. Um, so I'll be bringing out those episodes very soon. Um, obviously, I'll be playing all the way through that. All of the other Living Worlds and the um, expansions, um, all the content is available. So we won't have to do this again. But I think this recap's important to introduce you to the characters. Because as soon as we start Living World Season 2, all these characters are going to be involved. So thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe to be kept up to date. And I will see you later.